Welcome to the LifeWise online service for January 1st, 2023. Our first time getting together online for a service in this new year. And I pray that you have a happy and blessed new year. And the focus of what we're going to look at today is making the most of 2023. And I certainly hope that uh, that is your goal. Uh, that we just as we've had Christmas and most people exchange gifts, God has given us uh, a year, and that is a gift. Um, I think that for many people, we look at the world and say, things are so horrible, what can I possibly do? Well, there's plenty that you can do. And I pray that rather than looking at how bad you may think things are, uh, you look at the good that with God's help, you can do in this coming year. And that's what we're going to look at in a moment. But first, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this uh, opportunity to come together as your family and pray lord that you would uh, minister to our hearts uh, lord thank you for the gift of a new year and i pray that you'll give us vision that you will help to clarify uh, some things for us going forward about what is important and what is not important in our lives and we pray these things in jesus name amen
Muy bien. so much lostness in the world. There's so much the feeling of hopelessness and helplessness in the world. The answer for them is Christ. 
I was born in Malaysia in 1947. My family were idol worshippers. It was my duty, even though I was a boy, to serve the gods. And so without fail, every evening before we have our dinner, I would put jars in front of the idols. It was a big deal because we have idols for everything. My high school teacher invited me to an evangelistic meeting. That was the first time I heard about Christ. I heard that I was a sinner and coming from my background, I felt that Allah was pretty good, you know. And then one night, I believe it was the prompting of the Holy Spirit, a thought came to my mind and uh, which said to me, if this God is true, the greatest sin in my life would be to deny that. That really got hold of me and uh, the Lord convicted me of my sin. I went to all my, the idols and I said, this is the last time that I'm going to serve you. I have found the true God. And that was it. <laughs> I felt called to the ministry. I studied at uh, Hong Kong Baptist Seminary, which is also started by Southern Baptists, <laughs> funded by Southern Baptists, and staffed by Southern Baptists. Had it not been for the Lord and Moon offering, my life would have turned in a totally different direction. It's a gift that keeps on giving through the lives of people that are touched through the generosity of Southern Baptists. And I'm one of them, by the grace of God. Hi, welcome back, and uh, if you would like to make a contribution to Lifeway Baptist Church, you can do so through Venmo at our website, www.lifewaychurchvista.com, or checks can be mailed to the church office, Lifeway Baptist Church, 1120 Highland Drive, Vista, California. Heavenly Father, as we look at this new year that you've given us, I pray that, uh, first of all, I thank you for providing all of our needs, uh, for your promises that endure throughout the ages, regardless of what the world like, looks like. Your word doesn't change, and we are thankful for that. So, Father, be with us now as we look at making the most of 2023. So this is, uh, as at least the, the day that this uh, message will be released, the first day of a new year. Um, and I hope that uh, you will make some plans. And I know there's a lot of joking about resolutions, um, and resolutions certainly are the most important thing in life, but they are important. Uh, and I'm not talking so much about resolutions today as um, just hearing from God and setting your priorities that way. Uh, revelation is more important than resolution, but the revelation, revelation should lead us to wanting to do things for the Lord. And uh, so the, the verses, a couple of verses we're going to be looking at basically as the foundation of today's message, Proverbs 17:24 says, "A discerning man keeps wisdom in view, but a few fool's eyes wander to the ends of the earth." Or as it says in the, today's English version, or the good news, "An intelligent person aims at wise action, but a fool starts off in many directions." Um, does that describe your life? It's like it seems like there's so many things going on that you are going every which way, but you never really seem to get anything done. Well, a discerning man keeps wisdom in view. An intelligent person aims at wise action. And that's kind of what we're going to hopefully focus at and look at in this uh, little time we have here. Ephesians 5, 15 through 17 says, be, So be careful how you live. Don't live like ignorant people, but like wise people. Make good use of every opportunity you have, because these days are evil. Don't be fools then, but try to find out what the Lord wants you to do. Don't be fools. Try to find out what the Lord wants you to do. 
Don't look, be be wise, not ignorant, and make the most of the opportunity. And every year is a new opportunity for us. So how do we make the most of 2023? Well, we're going to look at um, some ways to prioritize and, and to take some initiative in your life. Uh, so how to make the most of 2023? Well, whatever it is you believe you're called to do, uh, the first step is to is re assume responsibility for my life. I must assume responsibility for my life. Galatians 6 5 says, For each of you have to carry your own load. Uh, people talk about the hand that you're dealt, and the reality is, is if you're in a poker game, you can't play anybody else's hand. You only play the hand you were dealt. And you can think it's a bum hand, or it's a great hand, or whatever, but it's your hand. And people feel like that in life, too. I was given a raw deal. I've had so many bad things happen. I was born to the wrong parents, to the wrong place, the wrong time. Well, all of that, as true as it is, doesn't change that it's your life. That's what you have to work with. And I'm so thankful with God. You know, earlier we went through a series on the parables. We looked through the parable of the talents. And the thing about God was he didn't give everybody the same, but they weren't responsible for more than they were given. So look at your life and say, this is the hand I was dealt, but I'm re only responsible for what I have, not for what I don't have. And make the most of what you do have, and God will honor and bless that. So I must assume responsibility for my life. Galatians 6, 5 says, for each of you have to carry your own load. Proverbs 22, 13 says, lazy people stay at home, uh, they say a lion might get them if they go outside. Uh, I can't do anything because I might get hurt. Well, if you are always afraid, you will never get in, do anything. Uh, that same verse from Proverbs 22, 13 in the Message Translation says, The loafer says there's a lion on the loose. If I go out, I'll be eaten. So I'll stay inside and watch TV all the day, all day. Well, you can use that logic every day of your life and end up not doing anything with your life. Um, I have to assume responsibility that if I'm going to get anything done, I have to get beyond the excuses and get to work. Second, if I'm going to have a great, make the most of 2023, I must understand that I can change. Uh, so many people think, well, I am what I am, <laughs> as Popeye said, I am who I am, and that's just who I will always be. Well, that would be true, perhaps, except for the gospel and the power that comes with knowing Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 and 17 say, So from now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view. And the worldly point of view says, He'll never change. He'll never be more than he is. She'll never be able to, blah, blah, blah. So from now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view, though we once regarded Christ in this way. We do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Uh, that kind of fights against the idea that we can't change. I can do, if I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength, I have incredible potential. Uh, and I, for good, even that I don't see or haven't experienced now, uh, I can change. And I have the power through Jesus to do that. Number three, if I'm going to make the most of 2023, I must crystallize my thoughts. Well, what do you mean by that? Uh, Merriam-Webster Webster Dictionary, the second definition, not the first. The first one's about crystals and stuff like that. But the word to crystallize means to cause to make a definite, take a definite form. So it's instead of just having all these things jumbling around in your brain, to give it shape, to give it a definite form. Uh, the example, he tried to crystallize his thoughts, and we need to crystallize our thoughts, so that, <clears throat> because if we don't, then we're just like we looked at in the other verse, you're thinking about everything all over the place, but we need to focus, be able to focus on what is important. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3 says, Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. So, in order to have a crystal vision of where we want to go, 
we can't look around us. We can't look at the things, the worldly things. We can't look at the news. We've got to look up to heaven where Christ is. Uh, and when we will set our gaze up above, we'll see how crystal clear things can get. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23 says, Everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible, but not everything is constructive. So to crystallize things in our life, we've got to not just say, what am I allowed to do, but what's good? What is going to be beneficial and constructive in my life? And if we want to um, <clears throat> move ahead with that, we need to crystallize our thoughts and make them constructive. I, Matthew chapter 6, 33 says, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. When we put God first, then we can get a lot done. We can have all the things that we need to move forward in life. And then number four, don't wait to start. Don't wait to start. Ecclesiastes 11.4 says, Whoever watches the wind will plant, will not plant. Whoever looks at the clouds will not reap. Well, if you're going to have a harvest, you've got to plant. Um, and you will never plant if you look out, go outside and, wow, it's too cloudy or it's too windy or it's too this or too that. Uh, you have to look at what you need to do, not what the obstacles are. Another uh, translation of Ecclesiastes 11.4 says, If you wait for perfect conditions, You'll never get anything done, and that's true in our life as well. Um, wow, I, I can't get married. I don't have enough money for retirement. <laughs> well, you should spend your years together planning and working on your retirement, not waiting for something that may well never come. Proverbs 6, 6 through 9 says, Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler, yet it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? The best way to do something is to do something. Um, and so if you have gone through those, you've assumed responsibility uh, in your own life, if you understand that you have the power of God to change, if you've crystallized your thoughts um, about what is important and what it is you want to accomplish uh, with your life and more specifically in the year 2023, then don't wait. Get going with it. Looking at some ways of how we can grow in 2023, uh, I like to think that we can grow like Jesus because if you look at Luke chapter 2, verse 52. This is one of the first few verses that where we learn things about Jesus' childhood. Uh, we've gone through Christmas and we studied his birth, but this is one of the few verses of, that we'll find in the actual Bible about him as a, uh, a younger, uh, younger boy or starting to become a man. And uh, the family went into Jerusalem for one of the feasts. Um, and uh, Jesus wasn't lost, but his parents didn't know who, where he was. Uh, and it says in Luke, they found him in the temple, uh, and he said, didn't you know I'd be about my father's business? Well, that shows some really good focus, doesn't it, uh, at that time. But then uh, the last verse of Luke 2, verse 52, uh, says, And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. Well, I would like to grow like Jesus, so I want to grow in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and with men. So let's, let's look at four ways that we can grow. And, you know, uh, it's obvious that uh, most of us feel like we live busy lives and far too much of that busyness maybe is sitting down and watching TV at night or playing video games or staring at your phone. Uh, but the reality is if you're going to add worthwhile goals, you have to subtract something else. So what goes along with this is how can I... Um, cut some things out of my life that really aren't profitable. Again, Paul wrote to the Corinthian church, all things are lawful, not all things are beneficial. If it's not beneficial, why are you doing it? So you need to uh, figure out some things to cut out as well. But with the time that you can have in your life, what is a good intellectual goal? What do I want to learn in 2023? Uh, because we have the internet, we have more access to information than ever before. And so 
think about something that you'd like to learn more about. Maybe it's gardening. Uh, that would be a, could be a fruitful thing, depending on how our uh, just supply chain goes here in this country. Uh, it could be something about the Bible. It could be something about your job to get a promotion. But have an intellectual goal. What do I want to learn in 2023? Proverbs 19.8 says, He who gets wisdom loves his own soul. He who cherishes understanding prosper. And essentially the Bible in many places talks about having a desire to know more, to learn more. And it actually says we perish from a lack of knowledge. Second, what's a good physical goal? Uh, what will improve my health in 2023? I think most people would agree that if you have a better physical standing, it increases all aspects of your life, including your ability to think. First Timothy 4.8 says, For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promises for both the present life and the life to come. So godliness has the greatest value, but physical training has value as well. And I think that uh, it's uh, important for everybody. I know the number one resolution is always lose weight. Well, I'm talking about what can you do? What is a simple, some type of simple goal? Get up 15 minutes earlier and go for a walk or lift some weights or do some aerobic exercise. Um, perhaps it would have to be with diet and not eating this anymore, cutting back on uh, fast food or, or uh, something that you know isn't that healthy for you, but you keep doing it anyway. Um, so have a physical goal. What will improve my health in 2023? And then a spiritual goal, because Jesus grew that way as well. What will deepen my relationship with to God in 2023? Second Peter chapter 3, verse 18 says, But grow in grace and knowledge in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forevermore. So stop and think and consider what is something in your life. Uh, some way in your life that you can improve your relationship with God. Uh, it might be, again, to get up a little earlier or stay up a little bit later, or uh, at lunchtime, instead of checking your email, say, I'm going to read some Bible passages or memorize something. But it's good to have a spiritual goal as well. What will deepen your relationship to God in 2023? Perhaps it's sharing the, with the, your, your faith with someone. Uh, you may not do that. It's important to see that that is a part of what uh, Jesus said we're supposed to do in the Great Commission, uh, make disciples of all nations. Uh, if we're not doing a part of that, then that should be part of our life. So what would be a spiritual goal for you? And then relationally, what will be my ministry to others, uh, to others be in 2023? First Peter chapter 4, verses 10 and 11 says, Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the words of God. If anyone serves, he should do it with the strength that God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Each one should use whatever gifts he has received to make a lot of money, to improve their their quality of life. Well, also to serve others. That's what, why God gives us gifts. And God gives all believers gifts. So what gift do you have that can bless others? Because we're not just here for ourselves. Jesus came to wash our feet. Uh, our goal should be uh, to have a ministry which leads others closer to God. Uh, you know, as I said at the beginning, a lot of people now are just looking at the end. Well, things are so bad. All I can think about is that Jesus is coming back. Well, Second Peter chapter 3 talks about the end of the world. And Second uh, Peter chapter 3, verses 10 through 13 says, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. And the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. How should we be in light of the fact that everything's going to be destroyed um, by fire? Well, we ought to live holy and godly lives. It doesn't say cut loose, you're going to you know, eat, drink, and be merry because soon we're going to die. It says we ought to live holy and godly lives as we look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. How do we speed its coming? Well, 
um, I think the best way that I see in Scripture, because it says what has to happen is the gospel has to go out into all the world, and then the end will come. So if you want to speed the coming of the day of the Lord, then one of your goals should be to be involved in evangelism, in sharing your faith, in supporting missions work that goes out and is getting the gospel around the world. That's the best way to speed his coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with, with his promise, we're looking forward to a new heaven, a new earth, the home of righteousness. I'm praying that you will have a blessed and incredible 2023. And I pray that you won't be afraid to make uh, some challenges, to have some challenges in your life, to set some goals. I know the word resolution seems like it has a bad thing, uh, taste in, leaves a bad taste in people's mouth. And so I'm not going to use that word, but at the end of 2023, do you want to be the same person you are at the beginning? Well, the way things change is you make them change. And so I pray that you have an awesome 2023 growing closer to the Lord. If you have any questions about the message today, you can reach me at www.lifewaychurchvista.com. Uh, there's a place at our website there that you can leave a message for me. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much that uh, you love us and that you give us this gift called time. And uh, you didn't uh, give time to us all at once, but you broke it down into to seconds, minutes, uh, hours, days, weeks, years, decades. And Lord, I just know that we can make goals that will honor you this year. And I pray that we will. And at the end of this year, we'll be closer to you, that you'll be closer to coming, uh, if you haven't come already, and that we'll just be rejoicing in what we were allowed to do for you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you. Happy New Year, and we'll see you next week.
Let your glory reign, shining like the day, King of heaven.